Inside the holy place, incense filled the air, and green smoke curled up. On the table, several cups of hot tea. Holding the book in his hand, Russell read it carefully. A quiet and peaceful scene. Next, though. Sitting in the chair, Tony was a little restless. I twisted my body, feeling uncomfortable all over. He glanced at Russell who was sitting on top, a trace of awe unconsciously flashed in his eyes. At the same time, there is also a little regret. A long time. Seeing the terrifying monster next to him staring at him. Tony finally couldn't bear it any longer. With a look of guilt on his face, he couldn't help but speak. Supreme Mage, what happened this time? It's all my fault. I shouldn't have leaked information about the magical holy place to them. If I had known that they would be so crazy, I would never have talked too much. This is the true thought in his heart. At the same time, as he spoke, he regretted more and more. There is an urge to give myself two slaps, in my heart, I regret it even more. How did he know that such a thing would happen just by talking too much and showing off a few words? In addition, the entire magic holy place was also exposed to the eyes of the world. This peaceful life that has been maintained since its establishment was finally broken by him. Hearing this, Russell picked up his teacup and took a sip. Then he put down the book in his hand, smiled and said. It's none of your fault, Tony. Even I underestimated the inferiority of human beings. Just like you can never wake up a person who is pretending to be asleep. They are killing themselves. Hearing this, Tony couldn't help but nodded in agreement. However, in my heart, I still feel a little uncomfortable. Because, the source of all these incidents is him after all. Perhaps, what should I do? Such thoughts popped up in Tony's mind unconsciously. And with a glance at him, Russell directly broke his mind. Don't think too much, Tony. I said, I don't blame anyone. Well, I believe that after they have learned this lesson, they should know how to be in awe. But immediately, he changed the topic and continued. If you really want to give yourself some comfort. Well. Your steel battlesuit. Hearing this, Tony suddenly lost face and was a little embarrassed. Ahem, it will be fine soon. Give me a little more time, and it will be done soon. This time he suddenly returned to the magical holy place, and he had something to ask for. However, this situation suddenly appeared. Plus Russell's reminder. Cough cough, I can't bear to speak up. After speaking, Tony stood up and prepared to leave. Now that Supreme Mage said so, he felt much better. Now, it's better to build the steel battlesuit that I promised a long time ago. If this drags on, I, Tony Stark, will become a pigeon. Tony smiled wryly in his heart. However, it seemed that he suddenly remembered something. The moment he was about to go out, Russell immediately added another sentence. By the way, if necessary, you can ask Modu for help. For example, help you take out a piece of shrapnel in your chest. I think he should be happy to help you, Tony. No, I'm afraid he's thinking about killing me now. Let's talk about it another day, watching his back in a hurry. Russell couldn't help but shook his head with a smile. This Tony Stark. Turning around, looking to the side. Dormammu, what do you think of him? It's not good. Dormammu rolled his eyes fiercely. He's no different from a common except for that tasty soul. For him, it is. After finishing speaking, he pretended to pick up the teacup and took a sip of the tea. However, soon, he couldn't pretend anymore. Huge amounts of fingers can't pick up the teacup flexibly at all. No, it should be said to be twisted. Boom. He patted the table hard as if he was angry. The poor teacup was crushed by him again. Why should I study the human way of life? Dormammu roared. Serving tea and pouring water to learn how to drink tea, isn't it embarrassing me, Dormammu? Because you want to live in the human world, Russell said with a smile. Unless, you don't even want this body anymore. Or, do you want to be locked in the seal by me? Dormammu was speechless for a moment, for this reason. There is nothing to say. Now, he dared not even have the slightest bit of resentment in his heart. The supreme mage in front of him is getting stronger and stronger. It was already easy to see through the thoughts in his heart. As long as you have any bad thoughts, you will be noticed immediately. Not to mention, return to the dark dimension. This is something he can't even think about now. However, he still had some murmurs in his heart. Can you shrink my body a little bit? Although this body suits my taste, it is too big for a human being. To your taste? Russell also froze for a moment. However, he immediately came back to his senses and said with a smile. Cannot. New York, military. Outside a laboratory. 
In the empty passage, two figures are moving forward at a fast pace. Agent Phil Colson, how is General Ross doing? Condition. Phil Colson smiled wryly. I don't know what words to use to describe the current situation of General Ross. And after holding it in for a long time, I could only utter one sentence. Not very optimistic. Hearing this, Nick Fury's footsteps suddenly froze. But immediately, he kept up with the pace again. He was still in New York when it happened. I want to stop it, but there's nothing I can do. All I could do was watch this happen. The military, the whole army is wiped out. Fallen under the weird magic ability. Even returning to New York was handled by agents such as Phil Coulson. If we talk about the current situation of General Ross. Fear. No one knows better than Phil Coulson. After all, he was there and witnessed all this with his own eyes. Even he said so. Well, General Ross is probably. Soon. Passing through layers of checkpoints and densely guarded by guards, the two successfully entered the laboratory. At the moment, inside the lab, a dozen scientists and medical teams had been waiting for a long time. Various sophisticated instruments and medical facilities are in operation. As soon as he entered the door, Nick Fury unconsciously looked at the center of the laboratory. On the white hospital bed, General Ross, rotten to the bone, lay on it. The whole body was motionless, like a corpse. But the weird thing is, he was so old that he couldn't even move a finger. Those cloudy eyes that were wide open could turn around. The flexibility is not like what this old body should have. This weird scene. Even Nick Fury, who has a big heart and has experienced various strange events, can't help being a little creepy. Goosebumps rose up all over his body unconsciously. Resisting the strange feeling in his heart, he observed carefully for a while. Then he turned his head and looked to the other side. Looking over at the worried medics looking at General Ross. How is he doing? Nick Fury asked again. He wanted to hear a more accurate answer. In order to find out what the so-called Supreme Mage did to General Ross. The situation is very bad. The medical staff who were questioned smiled wryly and shook their heads. His body has completely aged. The organ failure has come to an end, and even breathing seems a little bit reluctant. At first, I even suspected that he would die in the next second, but after inspection, it was found that he unfortunately did not have such a possibility. According to our speculation, the current General Ross, even if he wants to die, he can't die. What's the meaning? Hearing this, Nick Fury's heart sank immediately, he took a deep breath, and then asked. The medical staff spread their hands and said helplessly. Literal meaning. Although his body is already heading towards death, there is no possibility of reaching it at all. There seems to be some kind of strange power in his body, which is maintaining life. We can't do further detection, its properties are completely different from the energy we know. After listening, Nick Fury immediately understood what he meant. Strange power? Isn't this magic? However, he is obviously more concerned about another issue. That is, what has become of General Ross now? You're talking about natural death, so what about unnatural death? Nick Fury asked next. He was curious about this, and also hoped to find some loopholes. The loopholes of magic, or the loopholes of magic users. In this way, this means that the power of magic is not invincible. Because, as long as there are flaws, they will be able to find a way to crack them sooner or later. Unnatural death? Hearing this, the medical staff were a little dumbfounded. However, he shook his head and didn't say much. Turning around, a sharp scalpel was in his hand. Then, under the watchful eyes of everyone, he ruthlessly inserted into the heart of General Ross. Puff. Nick Fury was stunned for a moment. However, he hadn't waited for him to speak up. The medical staff were the first to speak, and said with a wry smile. Look, this is the possibility of unnatural death. We have tried it a long time ago. Even if his blood dries up and his heart is broken, he will not die. In a way, he is indeed a great miracle. Nick Fury silently withdrew his hand touching his waist, and rolled his eyes at General Ross. See his eyes, terrified look around. Heartbroken, I asked again. Then what's going on with his current appearance? Does he still have self-awareness? Yes, sir. Although he couldn't hear us, he didn't seem to have a nervous response. But the strange thing is that his eyes seem to be able to see everything we do to him, and have a normal human emotional response. It's just that I can't control the movement of my eyes. The medical staff said with a strange expression on their faces. It's like playing God with him. He couldn't move, he couldn't speak, and he was even deprived of the right to die. However, he has a clear self-awareness and can see everything he has experienced. 
Like a live dead man in some movie, he's in that state right now. No matter who it is for, it is tantamount to a nightmare. However, this nightmare seems a little real. On the verge of death, but lingering. Want to die, but can't move forward at all. I can only watch what I have experienced. Such a scene, just thinking about it, made Nick Fury shudder. It's hard to imagine what kind of pain the current General Ross is going through. Want to give him a relief. But unfortunately, they can't do it at all. Suppressing the increasingly intense sense of horror in his heart, Nick Fury settled down. Turning his head, he asked Phil Coulson, how does the military plan to arrange him? Well, right here, Phil Coulson pointed to the ground. At the same time, as he spoke, he looked over with some sympathy. The meaning of his words is self-evident. Laboratory? Nick Fury was stunned. Is this going to treat him as an experimental subject for research? So many old men, brought back from the scene, all treated as secret experimental subjects? Inhumane approach, he can only criticize orally. As for what to sue General Ross, no one will offend this behemoth with a dead man who doesn't want to do a job. Turning around, Nick Fury took Phil Coulson away with regret. I don't know if it was his illusion. The moment he went out, he seemed to hear General Ross's wailing from his soul. Magic holy place. Inside the mirror space. Here is the other side of the world. Nuoda's space was empty, and it just became Russell's experimental site. Dormammu, how do you feel now? Russell suppressed the smile in his heart, turned his head and asked. Beside. The black aura filled the air, and the figure of Dormammu floated in the air. Looking at the transformed and unrecognizable disgusting body in front of him, he couldn't help but twitch the corners of his mouth. I don't think. It's okay. If it weren't for Russell, it would be the supreme mage who was by his side. He couldn't help but swear. Even, there is an urge to hit someone in my heart. What kind of things are these special transformations? I have such a perfect body, but you just changed it into a four-faced one? What the hell is that big iron chain tied to him? Don't think I don't know you're copying Ghost Rider from Moto Faith. Also, what the hell are those extra long, thick bone spurs on the back? You've completely ruined the beauty of this body, okay? Dormammu suddenly felt a little tired. As long as he thinks of using such a body in the future and showing himself in front of the world, he feels ashamed. I'm a majestic lord of the dark dimension, like a demon that Mo Faith ran out from under his hand. In human terms. Low, it's really low. Russell didn't care what Dormammu was thinking. However, after touching his chin and examining it carefully for a while, he also found that there was something wrong with this look. Well, it really is an unreliable editor for everything. I originally wanted to install a pair of wings on the body of the Abomination to increase his combat ability, but it turned out. It's all just decorations. The originally prepared bone wings turned into ferocious barbs. The entire back area is covered by huge amounts of bone spurs. Even weapons have become decorations. Apart from making him more terrifying and terrifying, it didn't have any effect. However, after thinking for a while, Russell had another idea in his mind. Perhaps, it can be done from another angle. Since the common method can't fly, let's use a more scientific way. Well, by the way, prepare some spares for him. Immediately, his mind moved. Beside, Gold's portal appears. Afterwards, he took out pieces of magical artifacts from inside. Immediately afterwards, in his hands, white light flickered. Bright white's light enveloped the area again. And next to it, Dormammu is completely familiar. He will not be surprised at all by the strange magic in the hands of this supreme mage. After all, this is the supreme mage, and soon, the white light dissipated. The scene inside immediately came into view, and Dormammu was stunned immediately. What the hell? What the hell is this? Looking at the transformed and more thoroughly hated body in front of him, he suddenly felt like crying without tears. If I had known it would turn out like this, I shouldn't have believed his nonsense. It was hard to bargain, and regain the right to live in the sun from Russell. As a result, I never expected that I, the majestic Dormammu, the dimension Mephista, would have to attach such a body. Remodeling. Remodeling a fart. I see that you are clearly using me as a test subject. On the pitch black body, countless terrifying water chestnuts spread all over the body. The dense white bones protruding from the body, the curved arc is even more ferocious. However, the sharp bony spurs seem to be neatly flattened. At the end, only black holes are left. From time to time, dark energy gushes out from it. It's like the exhaust holes on some machines. Seeing this, the corners of Dormammu's eyes twitched. 
The current state is not as good as it was just now. At least the look just now can look a little more hideous and terrifying. At the very least, it can also reflect the terrifying side of his Dormammu. But now, he felt even more different, not even demons. This is simply a big toy assembled with various parts. Hearing this, Russell immediately glanced at him and pointed to the road. How can you call it a toy? This is a body I specially created for you. Look, after this transformation, you can fly into the sky. This is the method he came up with. With the heart of giving it a try, I tried it. However, looking at it now, it seems to be very successful. The bone spurs on the back of the abhorrence perfectly got rid of the role of decorations and became propellers one by one. As long as you have enough energy, even breaking out of the earth is not difficult. I could fly anyway, Dormammu argued aggrievedly. Well, are you sure? Russell squinted. Can abominations fly? Are you sure you didn't jump up and hit someone's knee? Sensing his gaze, Dormammu immediately shrank his head, obediently admitting his cowardice. Well, I won't. As the guard and image spokesperson of the magic holy place, I'm doing this for your own good, Russell reluctantly comforted. However, there is some sincerity in these words, which only he himself knows. Spokesperson? No, janitor. Hearing this, Dormammu reluctantly nodded. Then, with some doubts, he asked, then what about my energy source? Such a huge body consumes a lot of energy. Now the loathsome body has lost the vitality it should have as a living creature. Perhaps it is more appropriate to call it a weapon. Moreover, every movement requires a lot of energy. It is a big energy consumer. Stupid. Russell gave him a hard look, and said in a tone of hatred. Can't you borrow without energy? You were Dormammu. Understood. I'm going to communicate with the Dark Dimension. Follow the Venerable Supreme Mage. Dormammu felt that he was a bit carried away. Usually, I only know how to fight and kill in my mind. Once again, there is such a concept of thinking. Well, think in a human way. I lend myself. It feels a little weird. However, there are not too many worries anyway. Even if something happened, someone would top the tank. Anyway, this kind of thing doesn't happen once or twice. Thus, the dimensional communication ceremony was started again. In the mirror space, the deep void fell again. Break through layers of space barriers and connect to the dark dimension. The familiar smell of decay reappeared. For a moment, the dark energy swarming out filled the entire space. On the sidelines, Russell is waiting. I have already made complete preparations, and I am waiting for Dormammu of Rage to come and meet the challenge again. However, after waiting for a long time, there was no sign of a Dormammu poking out. Russell was suddenly a little surprised. Iron-headed Dormammu is not iron-headed this time? According to his usual habits, he was now maddened by rage, and he couldn't wait to run out of it. Ready to descend to the earth and tear them into pieces, these two sneaky guys. However, this time the situation was obviously somewhat unexpected. Below, Dormammu, manipulating the loathsome body, was sucking and devouring. The dark energy visible to the naked eye gathered in his body. Along with it, even the skin was darkened a lot. Black to shiny. In such a situation, it should be impossible for Dormammu not to notice it. Russell thought to himself. Could it be that he has given up treatment? Well, kind of makes sense. Every time he ran out aggressively, but was blasted back by him in a more brutal way. This. Whoever comes here will feel unbearable. What's more, this is Dormammu who is a dimension Mephista. Could it be that he doesn't want to lose face? Simply, it's better to pretend that you didn't see it. Out of sight, out of mind, do whatever you want. The more I think about it, the more likely it is. With a wave of his hand, the various enchantments that had been arranged around him were dispersed. Russell felt a little emotional in his heart. It seems that this Dormammu has also learned to be smart. Originally, I was thinking of having two tricks with him, to see if I could get some more benefits by the way. However, who would have thought? Such a nasty Mephista actually had a day of counseling. Plan bankruptcy. Russell simply stopped thinking about it. Turning his head, he glanced at Dormammu who was still excitedly absorbing the dark energy below. Seeing that he didn't seem to be satisfied, he took this opportunity to open the long-lost chat group. At the moment, in the chat group, there was silence. No one spoke, it was as quiet as a ghost. Russell couldn't help being surprised if it was normal. What? Ten thousand years of dead house and squatting at home, Dormammu is no longer in the water. This is simply a fantasy. More than half of the activity in the entire chat group is due to his contribution. 
But now, as the instigator, he is secretly laughing in his heart. The current Dormammu is probably a little autistic. At the beginning, Dormammu was still very stubborn, and he talked about his fragrance in the chat group, stealing the limelight. However, after being given a few silence packages by him, he seemed much more honest. At the very least, I didn't dare to be too presumptuous, and even talked a lot less. It's just that without the speech of Dormammu, who has been squatting at home for thousands of years. The entire chat group seemed strangely deserted. Supreme Mage Russell. At Dark Dimension Lord Dormammu, where? For a long time, there was no response. Well, from this point of view, it seems even more autistic. On the contrary, other people popped up one after another. God King Odin. At Mage Russell, preparing for the ceremony. But the hot girls are ready. Hint. No, this stepping on the horse is simply a clear statement. The wheels are going to run over my face. This Odin, when did you start doing this kind of pimping? Russell patted his chest, calmed his little heart that was about to move, and said firmly. Thanos the destroyer of thousand planets, the Kree is a guest. By the way, I also sent a picture. On the screen, people of different skin colors greet each other with smiles and raise their glasses to toast. Seeing this, Russell suddenly felt something was wrong. This Thanos, why did you run away from Crystal? However, he soon knew the reason. Ms. Marvel, it turns out that the Kree people are looking for foreign aid, at Thousand Star Destroyer Thanos. Seeing this, Russell was immediately refreshed and interested. This situation. Another good show. Soon, the chat group vibrated. Thanos the Destroyer of Thousand Stars. You think I'm afraid because I choose to avoid? No. I just hate that guy Ronan even more. Russell automatically made up his mind and translated it. Thanos. You don't really think I'm afraid of you, do you? No way? No way? I just want to use your hand to kill Ronan. How much face is given to you, do you still have to make an inch? Thinking of this, I couldn't help laughing out loud. There is a picture. I can't tell, I'm a hermaphrodite for this purple sweet potato essence with thick eyebrows and big eyes. Old on my OG. Nasty people have a hand. I am afraid that everyone will feel uncomfortable after being harassed by this meal. Really. Immediately, Carol suddenly couldn't help feeling out of breath. Ms. Marvel Carol. Sure enough. That guy Ronan is right, you all deserve to die. Seeing this, Thanos was not too pushy immediately. Thanos the destroyer of thousand stars. I'll be waiting for you on Kree. Ms. Marvel Carol. Good. Both are violent masters. You can see it from the last time you met your eyes. If you don't agree at first glance, you will make an appointment. But this time it was even more straightforward, and he directly reported his family. Come, come. Just come, I'll be waiting for you on carry. Simple aggressive method. But it works. At least, that's true for Carol's tantrum. It's just that the authorities are confused, but the bystanders are clear. Russell noticed something was wrong. Supreme Mage Russell. Since you are ready to fight, why are you on carry? See here. In the universe, Carol, who was full of anger, froze for a moment and stopped. Yeah. Why are you on carry? There is the center of the Kree Empire, the home of the Kree people. Even looking at the entire universe, it can be called one of the most dangerous places. Could it be that? There is a conspiracy? No, this is naked conspiracy. At the same time, Russell already had an answer in his heart. Thanos' purpose in doing this is simple. It is to make Carol throw himself into the trap. It is believed that a net has been laid around Carrie, waiting for her arrival. In addition, there is Thanos who is watching from the side. This lineup is definitely not to be underestimated. However, for Carol, unless, she chooses to give up the idea of being an enemy of the Kerry Empire. Otherwise, if you want to destroy the rule of supreme wisdom, the only way to go is to go straight to Wanglong. Because, compared to the Kree Empire, one of the three great empires in the universe, her existence is really too insignificant, although it is undeniable that she is powerful. It is so powerful that even the upper echelons of the Kerry Empire shrink back and dare not go out. However, the power of the individual is limited after all. What if she could dismantle the rule of the supreme intelligence step by step by liberating the colonies of the Kree Empire? The speed at which she liberated the colonies was far inferior to the speed at which the Kree Empire colonized them. Even if she can beat it, she probably won't know that it's the year of the monkey when she finishes everything. It is precisely because of this that Thanos is so confident. Either give up or fall into the trap. Carol, too, thought of this, too. In my heart, I was very entangled. 
For a while, some hesitation was unresolved, however, at this moment. In the chat group, there was a burst of news. Supreme Mage Russell. At Marvelms.Carol, watch out for Thanos, he has a mind gem in his hands. That's all I can say. This is still for the sake of the people on Earth at the same time. Just gave her a mouthful. If it were someone else, he wouldn't even bother to say anything. They gave her such an obvious reminder. If it still crashes in, it's no fault of him. Russell can only accept her power with tears in his eyes, and will settle the score with Purple Potato in the future. Ms. Marvel Carol. Mind Gem? What's that? I seem to have heard of it somewhere, but I can't remember it. Cannot remember? Or never heard of it? You have been in the universe for so many years, are you a fool? Hurry up and return to Earth. Everyone on Earth knows the function of this thing. No wonder you can turn a blind eye to the space gem in front of you, what a talent. However, there is one thing to say, Nick Fury is really a leaked king. Thanos the destroyer of thousand stars, as expected of the supreme mage, you really know a lot. Carrie Star. Huge amounts of banquet hall. Thanos narrowed his eyes unconsciously. It seems that he may even know about my plan to collect infinite gems. The ability of time gem is really powerful. All along, he has been secretly probing for clues about infinite gems. I even collected one of the mind gems in my hand. It's just that it's kept secret, and no one has ever discovered it. However, Russell was able to tell the truth of his whole cards. For a moment, he immediately attributed all this to Time Gem. I thought things would be much easier after Ancient One abdicated. Did not expect. A. Why do you feel that it is more troublesome? He also needs the power of the Kree Empire to help him find the few remaining gems. And looking at it now, Carol doesn't seem to be so easily hooked. Then the cooperation with the Kree Empire is a bit difficult to talk about. Thinking about it, Thanos couldn't help becoming a little irritable. I couldn't help but patted my head, feeling a headache. There is one thing to say. The existence of this Supreme Mage is really a big trouble. Supreme Mage, Bis, the other side of the Earth. Somewhere on the vast African continent. A piece of virgin forest covered, lush. Precipitous peaks and valleys cover the entire area, which is extremely steep. At the moment. On the outskirts of the area, several men in black robes were whispering. It's for sure. This is the place. One of the weak points of the Earth's space is near here. This is the easiest place to connect to the universe apart from the three holy places. As long as we start the ceremony, we will definitely be able to let the great master descend to the earth. The leader said confidently. As he spoke, he lifted the hood on his head. Open your hands, facing the sun it seems that only in this way can I feel the long lost breath of freedom. At that time, we will definitely receive his reward, eternal life, endless knowledge is beckoning to us. The people next to them seemed to be infected by this emotion, their faces were moved, and they took off their hoods excitedly. Those stubborn mage will be punished, that's right. At that time, they will know who is the master of this planet. However, suddenly, someone couldn't help asking. Kesilius, why didn't the magic holy place include this place within the range of the enchantment? Don't you think the atmosphere here is a bit strange? Kesilius, that's right. The few people who appeared here were Kesilius, who was a follower of Dormammu, and his followers. They browsed through various materials in their minds, and finally found this suitable place. Traveling through mountains and rivers to find this place is to be able to open the dimension channel again. In this way, let Dormammu descend to earth. Strangeness. Hearing this, Kesilius was stunned for a moment. He looked around suspiciously, it's really weird to say the least. Obviously it is a virgin forest, however, everything around is silent. Not even the chirping of birds and insects, or the sound of animals looking for food. Full of a strange sense of incongruity, it's eerily quiet. There's something wrong with this place. In Kesilius's heart, he immediately became vigilant. In addition, the faces of the followers behind him also felt a little nervous. However, he moved forward slowly, with no intention of stopping at all. Even if there is something strange here, it's better than opening the dimensional communication ceremony in the magic holy place. After experiencing what happened last time, he is very clear. I must have been blacklisted by the Kamar Taj mages. As long as you dare to appear in front of them, many mage will definitely come to round up. In comparison, it's pretty good here, except for something weird. At least, no F asterisk king mage here, I thought so. Another step under his feet, but, suddenly, the space is reversed. The scene in front of him suddenly changed. Looking not far away, 
the magnificent city suddenly appeared in front of him. Kesilius was stunned for a moment. Behind him, several followers who followed were also lost in confusion. Why is there a human city here? Moreover, what made him feel a little unacceptable was that the human technology here seems to be much higher than that of the outside world. At least, from the perspective of the city's architecture, it has a more sci-fi feel. Is this the real power of this country called Wakanda? They hid the truth from the world and lurked in this place silently. There is definitely some secret in it. Kesilius was sure of that. One of the poorest countries on earth. There is such a magnificent city hidden inside. If it is said that there is no secret in it, who would believe it? However, he didn't care too much. There is no magic breath here. In other words, here are some common people with high-tech means. They can't stop our ceremony, they can only watch. Let the fall of this city, come and welcome the great lord of darkness, Dormammu. Kesilius said excitedly. Behind him, the eyes of several followers became hot. He looked at this magnificent city. It's like looking at the deliciousness on a dinner plate. Wakanda. Magnificent city interior. The luster of metal permeates every corner. The whole city is filled with a sense of technology like a future product. Here, is where the real Wakanda is located. Poverty is just an illusion they created for the outside world. For thousands of years, the people of Wakanda have relied on this magical land for their survival. At the same time, relying on the mysterious metal buried under this soil, vibranium. It has also developed vibranium technology that is similar to the outside world but somewhat different. The speed of technological development is extremely rapid, far exceeding the level of the outside world. But, also because of vibranium, Wakanda has never been open to the outside world. Because, they know, vibranium, a mysterious metal, brings them infinite convenience. Similarly, it can also bring them death. At the moment, in the center of the city, huge amounts of palaces. The current king of Wakanda, T'Chaka, was a little puzzled when he looked at the people who were tied into Zongzi below him. Who are they? An outsider who broke in unintentionally, or are they with the thieves? Thief? Hearing this, Kesilius, whose face was bruised and swollen, suddenly became angry and couldn't help but speak. You ignorant humans, how dare you insult a noble? Snapped. Behind him, a huge force struck, causing him to stagger violently. In the stomach, the unspoken words stopped for a while. Can you talk nicely? T'Challa said seriously. Now in front of you is the king of this country, the leader of all people, show me some respect. After being kicked hard, Kesilius immediately felt aggrieved. Turning around, she glared at him fiercely. You guys, wait for me. Just wait for the great Mephista to come, and you will all be my prey. Crazy talk. On the throne, T'Chaka couldn't help but shook his head and muttered to himself. These people, are their brains broken? What about Mephista? What about Advent? Who are you trying to fool? Also, based on your bruised nose and swollen face, how convincing is there? Turning his head, he immediately looked to the side. T'Challa. Where did you find them? Hearing this, T'Challa bowed slightly, and saluted respectfully. Although he is the king's son, the next Black Panther. However, for his own father, he is respected from the heart. He will not forget etiquette because of his special status. In the fringe area. When I found them, they seemed to be preparing some kind of ancient sacrificial ceremony. After speaking, T'Challa seemed to think of something. Immediately afterwards, another sentence was added. They don't look like common people. Inside their bodies, there is a special energy hidden. Even in a short period of time, you can use this energy to compete with our warriors. Hearing this, T'Chaka was a little surprised. There was some emotion on the old face. In other words, the ceremony they said is very likely to be true? Yes. T'Challa said respectfully. Hearing his affirmative answer, King T'Chaka couldn't help frowning. Then, outsiders, tell me who you are. Who are we? Hearing this, Kesilius smiled strangely. There was a strange light in his eyes. We are heralds of magic, disciples of Dormammu, the great lord of the dark dimension. The devourer of chaos, the end of all things, the maker of history. Come, follow us, mortals. The great Dormammu grants you immortality. Accompanied by the words that Kesilius said slowly. Strange spiritual power gradually spread. Looking at each other, T'Chaka's eyes couldn't help but become a little dull. And seeing the trick succeed, Kesilius couldn't help showing a smile on his face. These damned mortals dare to offend mage. After I untie the shackles, I will definitely make your life worse than death. 
He thought happily. However, he obviously forgot that there was another person beside him. Seeing this scene, T'Challa suddenly noticed something was wrong. Snapped. Another heavy kick sent him flying. What kind of sorcery are you using? T'Challa growled angrily. And at this time, taking this opportunity, T'Chaka, the king who got rid of Kesilius's control, looked a little unhappy. Rubbing his still tingling forehead, he felt a splitting headache. Are you all right, father? T'Challa asked anxiously. Fine. Suppressing the tingling in his mind, T'Chaka waved his hand. It's just that the occasional twitches on his old face betrayed him. T'Challa, who watched from the side, felt distressed. Can't help burning with anger. These damn intruders must not be easily spared. Don't be impulsive, don't forget what I taught you. T'Chaka stopped him. At the same time, looking at Kesilius below who was gnashing his teeth, he couldn't help frowning. They mentioned magic just now, if I heard correctly. Magic? T'Challa was stunned. Immediately afterwards, his face became serious. You mean, Kamar Taj? Right. Their origins are definitely related to those mysterious mage. Outside the magic holy place, Kamar Taj. It is still a bustling scene with a lot of people. This ancient city does not seem to be affected by the raging army. Under the influence of someone's huge mental ability, no one can remember what happened. Everything was the same, as if nothing had happened. Only a few remember the truth. A haze emerged in their hearts, making their memory still fresh. And today, we have a new guest here, WWW. Inside the holy place, Russell is getting ready. And next to him, Dormammu looked sad, with huge amounts of palms nowhere to rest. The small eyes revealed a look full of grievances. However, he didn't dare to show all these small actions. I can only feel sad in my heart. Another day of being treated as a test subject. This hard day, when will it end? This supreme mage, from time to time, all kinds of strange ideas will pop up in his mind. And soon, these thoughts will be put on him, helpless, sad, wrong. In the end, it became numb, shaking. I, Dormammu, Mephista, when can I really stand up? Dormammu was secretly cursing himself, and at this moment, outside the holy place, the figure that hurried in made his eyes shine. It's Mordo. The savior is here. The supreme mage never liked having people interrupt his work. There is no business, and other mages will not come to see him. And looking at Modu's hurried appearance, it is obvious that there is something important to report. Really. Modu's next words immediately confirmed the conjecture in his heart. Exalted mage, we have found Kesilius. Oh, Kesilius. Russell heard the words, and immediately stopped the action of picking the magic weapon. For this loyal follower of Dormammu, although he doesn't care too much. But, since I just found it, let's deal with it by the way. Where is he? Hearing this, Modu couldn't help but wryly smiled. You may not believe it when you say it, but it is in this city where we are. Russell was also a little stunned for a moment. What kind of bullshit is this? Dark under the lights. Could it be that he hasn't given up yet? Are you really that brave? Are you ready to try another dimensional communication ritual here? No. Modu's face suddenly became a little weird, he shook his head and denied the thoughts in her heart. Even if he has such an idea now, it won't help. Because, he has become someone else's prisoner. Prisoner? Russell was stunned for a moment. What's the situation? Could it be that someone couldn't help but bet on mage? The military, shield, or some shadowy organization? Turning his head, he looked aside. Dormammu, your believer has been kidnapped, why don't you express it? What bullshit believers? Dormammu curled his lips in disdain. I, Dormammu, don't need others to believe in me. Hee <laughs> hee, the dead duck has a hard mouth. That's not what you said when you wanted to come to Earth. Russell smiled incredulously. Turning his head, he looked forward. Mage, bring Kesilius back to the holy place. Even if you need to be punished, it shouldn't be done by outsiders. Besides, what a shame to be caught by the commons. What a disgrace to the wizarding world. This kind of person cannot be kept. Hearing this, Modu nodded and respectfully agreed. Okay, Supreme Mage. After speaking, he turned and left. Didn't make him wait long. In the holy place, Modu's figure appeared again. Together with him, it is Kesilius and his followers who are bound into rice dumplings by some special material. Beside, there was a respectful figure. When Russell saw him, he couldn't help being stunned for a moment. Black Panther? Why is he here? although I still haven't got rid of the troubles of foreigners face blindness. 
But, on Black Panther, the gorgeous clothes covered with patterns, and his polite posture are quite recognizable. It was only then that Russell recognized him immediately. Turning his eyes, he said slowly, Your name is T'Challa, right? Hearing this, T'Challa immediately raised her eyebrows, a little surprised in her heart. However, all this was beyond his expectation. However, if you think about it carefully, it makes sense. Being able to see my identity at a glance, I'm afraid this is the power of Supreme Mage. Thinking of the astonishing scene he saw not long ago, the awe in his heart intensified even more. So, with one hand on his chest, he leaned over and said respectfully. Yes, Supreme Mage. At this time, Mo Du took a step forward and explained. When I found Kesilius and others, they were in T'Challa's hands. These evil god believers are going to open the dimensional passage in Wakanda. However, they overestimate themselves and underestimate everyone. Going to Wakanda to make trouble? Russell laughed inwardly. Couldn't help but cast a glance at Kesilius and the others. What af asterisk king talent you are. Such a big earth, you don't really think that ancient one forgot about this place when it first built the magic holy place? Thinking of this, Russell felt a sense of joy inexplicably. Go find trouble in Wakanda, no wonder these people have a hard time. But soon, he put aside the distracting thoughts in his mind. His eyes were on the half-kneeling figure below. Long time no see, Kesilius. Hearing this, Kesilius raised his head with difficulty. Looking at Russell sitting above, his eyes were a little dazed. No one would have thought that the heir chosen by Ancient One Mage would be you. Even I didn't think of that. Russell couldn't help but sigh with emotion. At the beginning, he refused in every possible way, and made up his mind never to accept it. Now it seems, hum, kind of fragrant. Kesilius stared at him with eyes full of hatred. But he was silent for a long time and did not answer. Seeing this, Russell immediately had no interest in talking to him anymore. Didn't you always want to be in Dormammu's arms? In that case, it will be as you wish. Turning his head, he looked at the huge figure next to him who was ignored by everyone. Dormammu, I leave them to you. Remember, be sure to give everyone a satisfactory explanation. At this time, everyone followed the prestige and found the existence of Dormammu in a terrifying shape. I was taken aback and Kesilius and the others were stunned immediately, their faces full of disbelief. Dormammu? No, that's not possible. Hearing this, Dormammu chuckled. His eyes were full of surprise, it's like looking at prey. In the animal pupils, the light flickered, and the scalp of those who watched couldn't help but feel numb. How can it be impossible, I am Dormammu, the great existence you believe in. As he spoke, he stood up and moved his huge body. Dark energy filled his body, and his joints creaked. It was like carrying a few little chickens, and brought out a few people who were a little bit broken. In my heart, I did not forget to silently give Russell a thumbs up. Go. Go out and touch. I just practiced a set of bastard boxing recently, just to try my luck. Inside the holy place. After Dormammu left with a few people, T'Challa still didn't feel relieved. After a long time, he finally took a deep breath. However, the look of doubt in his eyes didn't seem to decrease at all. Dormammu? That monster just now is the evil god they believe in? Just the huge momentum made him a little out of breath, coupled with his terrifying and hideous appearance. To say he is a monster is really appropriate. However, it made him a little puzzled. Obviously it is the evil god in their mouth. Why does it appear in the magic holy place? Moreover, there is no refutation of Supreme Mage's order. He didn't have the arrogance of evil god in his imagination at all. Could it be that there is some misunderstanding here? He couldn't figure it out, and he was a little confused. He could only look over with puzzled eyes. He looked at the supreme mage above, hoping to get an answer from him. But at this time, Modu stepped forward again, with a strange expression on his face. He's Dormammu, yes, but he's only part of the real Dormammu, not the terrible evil god. Now, he is our Asgardian of Kamar Taj. At the end, I suddenly felt that something was wrong, and added another sentence. Well, under the teaching of our supreme mage. At the moment, Shi Chala finally had a sudden realization. So this is ah. Similarly, I also understand why Kesilius and others just collapsed like this. It's the same as anyone else. It's like the idol I've been chasing so hard, but in the end it has become a toolman under the hands of others. It is really unacceptable. However, these words come down. T'Challa suddenly had a deeper understanding of the power of magic. At the same time, secretly made up his mind, Supreme Mage. 
He stepped forward and said respectfully, I came here this time to deal with the intruders like Kesilius. Mo Du had already explained this matter clearly to him. These evil god followers are betrayers of the magical holy place. It is not surprising what kind of amazing move will be made. However, this accident also aroused his curiosity. Secondly, I am deeply curious about the existence of magic. Hearing this, Russell immediately looked over with interest, narrowed his eyes and smiled. Oh? You mean, you want to learn magic? Yes, T'Challa said cautiously. The attitude of this supreme mage is particularly important to him. As long as you can convince him and believe in yourself, you can open the door to the magical world. Before I came here, I prepared a little gift for you. Treasure of Wakanda. Vibranium. This is the sincerity of our Wakanda, and it is also a testimony of friendship. As he spoke, he respectfully presented the metal box in his hand. At the same time, I felt a little uneasy. Doesn't this approach seem too Philistine? It feels like some dirty PY transactions in human society. I wonder if Supreme Mage will mind. However, Russell didn't think so much about it. Hearing the familiar name of Vibranium, he immediately became interested. I picked it up, opened it, inside is a strange metal like a meteorite. I touched it lightly with my hand. In my mind, the pictures flowed, and I immediately had the answer in my heart. Sure enough, it's Vibranium that's right. Whether Black Panther would deceive him was not clear. But he knows very well that magic will never deceive him. Tracing back to the source, this is Vibranium dug out of the ground in Wakanda. However, looking at the piece of Vibranium in front of him, how does Russell feel? The sincerity of Wakanda seems to be a little, not enough? Could it be that the price of magic is so cheap? Or is he, the supreme mage, so ignorant? Trying to bribe him with such a small piece of Vibranium? Noticing his questioning gaze, T'Challa suddenly realized, and quickly added. Sovereign mage, this is just a trivial part. We at Wakanda are willing to give you more if you need it. Okay, on the road. Young man, you are lucky enough. Russell expressed satisfaction with this answer. Although the enrollment criteria of Magic Holy Place always pay attention to fate. But, facing this circumstances, it seems that it is not impossible to make an exception once. After all, there are some things he can do without. But absolutely not. Something like Vibranium originally has extremely high value. Among them, even the hardest metal in Marvel has some blown ingredients in it. I'm afraid it won't be too bad, it's just a good time to study a new topic. As for the feasibility of the Vibranium magic weapon, I want to see if something like Vibranium is considered a magic material. Russell thought amusedly. At the same time, he nodded in satisfaction and agreed. In this case, then T'Challa, the door to the magical world will open for you. Thank you, Supreme Mage. T'Challa clasped his hands together and said a little excitedly. And beside. Witness the birth of a PY transaction, Mo Kang's face looked a little weird. After hesitation, he opened his mouth cautiously. Supreme Mage, isn't it a bit bad to do this? Huh? What's wrong? Russell squinted. Ancient One Mage said. Modu hesitated and opened his mouth. However, before he finished speaking, he was interrupted by Russell. Modu Mage, I'm afraid you forgot one thing. Now, I am the Supreme Mage. Hearing this, Mo Du felt a chill in his heart. Oops. How could I forget this one? The rules of the magic holy place have always been dictated by the Supreme Mage. Russell half closed his eyes and smiled. Mage, you still have some primordial boards. Even if you are a mage, you must learn to keep pace with the times. Do you have time or not? Do you know how to read more about the workplace experience written by others? Young man. You make it difficult for me to step down like this. How about it, mage, T'Challa's magic lessons will be left to you for the time being. Hearing this, Modu's hands and feet were suddenly cold, and his heart felt as if he had fallen into a hole in the ice. Last time it was Tony Stark, this time it's T'Challa. Don't you think the burden on me is not heavy enough? What the hell, even if I am dead, I jump from here. Cough cough, forget it, let's accept our fate. Kamar Taj. Outside the holy place, huge amounts of training ground. Seeing the figure soaring in the air, Russell's face looked a little weird. The steel battlesuit is finished, the first thing is to come back here to show off? Hearing this, the smile on the face of Tony next to him froze, and he quickly explained. Ahem. How can this be called showing off? I'm here to let mages experience the power of the steel battlesuit first. Well, the pre-sales service is very reasonable. However, in Russell's opinion, 
This guy is obviously coming back to pretend to be cool. Steel Battlesuit, this fresh big toy. As soon as it appeared, it ushered in the enthusiastic pursuit of mages. After all, even in human society, there is no such high tech. However, the steel battlesuit is such a technological creation. For the first time to appear in front of the world, it will be in Kamar Taj, the gathering place of mage. I have to say, this made Russell feel a little weird. It's like, it's like a Tony Stark launch event. He couldn't help complaining in his heart, at this time. Modu, who had just experienced a steel battlesuit function, walked over with an unsatisfactory expression on his face. Tony Mage, the steel battlesuit is really good. That's definitely, I, Tony Stark, made it myself, Tony said proudly. However, immediately afterwards, Mo Du changed the subject. However, I think these are not enough. Although its function is powerful, its defense is also extremely strong, and it also has the ability of flight. But, unfortunately, it doesn't work for Mage. Tony clearly knew that too. Hearing this, the expression on his face was a little embarrassed. Even the tone of his speech was lowered a lot, and he hesitated a bit. Now it's just the first generation of steel battlesuits, and there are still defects in some places. He is well aware of these shortcomings. Some functions are not perfect enough. It is enough to have flight ability and defense which are most needed for mages. However, the most terrible thing is that wearing such a thick layer of steel battlesuit completely affects the casting of magic. Because, for most mage, the auxiliary effect of sling ring cannot be replaced at all. Wearing a steel battlesuit makes it difficult to wear an island ring. Moreover, some actions that require the cooperation of gestures are not so easy to perform. It's just that my family knows their own affairs. It is a big project to solve these problems. Only when nanotechnology matures in the future can these defects be solved. The current steel battlesuit is still too mechanized, and the movements are too rigid. Tony sighed. However, as he spoke, he immediately thought of something. Supreme Mage, didn't you say that you have the ability to solve these problems? Hear hear. Suddenly, everyone's eyes looked over. The topic suddenly came up, and Russell was speechless for a moment. How to say it is good, you are pulling on me again. What is this called, the people who eat melons get burned? However, facing everyone's questioning eyes, he had no choice but to nod. Yes, I can indeed help you solve this problem. Whether it is using alchemy or the editor of all things, it can be easily solved. However, there is no need for this. If you want to find the answer to your question, here is a more suitable candidate. Hearing this, everyone was stunned. A more suitable candidate? Could it be that there is no one here who is more powerful than the Supreme Mage? But then, curious eyes looked over. Who is it? One by one, they pricked up their ears and listened, feeling very itchy in their hearts. Russell didn't say much. Instead, he smiled mysteriously, and called out not far away. T'Challa, come here. Soon, T'Challa in a mage robe came over. Supreme mage, what's the matter? However, Russell did not answer his question, instead asking. Wakanda's nanotechnology should be fully mature, right? T'Challa was at a loss for a moment, not knowing why he suddenly asked this. However, in the face of Supreme Mage's inquiry, he had no choice but to respectfully say. Yes. Hearing this, Russell immediately nodded in satisfaction. Turning around, looking aside, look, isn't this the solution? At the moment, Tony's head was still a little dizzy. My mind became a mess, his eyes were full of unbelievable doubts. Mature nanotechnology, are you sure this is not a joke? He thought that the technology he held in his hands had completely surpassed the entire world. As a result, something actually told him now. It turned out that he was the one who was surpassed. How can this make him believe it? In this kind of thing, I will never joke with anyone. T'Challa patted his chest and assured with a serious face. If you don't believe it, welcome to Wakanda to prove it. Seeing him like this, Tony was stunned, and his face looked like he had seen a ghost. This guy doesn't look like he's lying at all. Could it be that? What he said is true. So, in this way, doesn't it mean that I, Tony Stark, actually want to ask someone else for technical support? The more I think about it, the more I doubt life. Suddenly he couldn't understand, is this a magical holy place or a scientific holy place? Why do random individuals have more advanced technology than him? Could it be that he Tony Stark, is there really nothing but money? And at this time, Russell was strolling casually, admiring the surrounding scenery. In the ears, the sound of the system suddenly sounded. The check-in task has been released, 
Please go to the check-in location to check in as soon as possible. In a few days, outside the holy place, still on the familiar training ground. Supreme Mage, I beg you, just take me there. Tony was begging for nothing, hugging Russell's thigh and crying. Those longing little eyes, miserable look. It was almost accompanied by a snot and a tear. Otherwise, it's safe to be a cameo actor. Russell pulled his leg with disgust on his face. However, whoever thought it would be enough to surround him. Hold on tight to his trouser legs. If you let people outside know what you look like now, maybe you will be able to make headlines again. Shocked. Tony Stark, chairman of Stark Industries and a genius scientist, did such a thing. In other words, it was also the first time he saw Tony like this. Never thought that this guy's shamelessness is really limitless. Russell was quite helpless about this. I can only comfort with earnest words. Tony, what you should do now is go to Wakanda and process your steel battlesuit. Otherwise, holy place mages, I won't let you go easily. Big guy. Waiting for your shipment. Gearing up, eager to try. If he dared to steal and play tricks, he might be beaten by some mage. However, Tony was obviously ready. With a firm attitude, everything has already been arranged. Nonchalant way. T'Challa and Jarvis are responsible for this matter, and I don't need to participate at all. As he spoke, he howled shamelessly again, Supreme Mage, just take me there. I also want to go to Asgard to learn more. This mournful cry made those who heard it sad and those who saw it shed tears. I don't know, I probably thought that something happened to him. On the side, under the torment of the magic sound. Mo Du finally couldn't take it anymore. Supreme Mage, why don't you just take him with you? Russell was also a little tangled in his heart. Originally, it didn't matter if I took this guy on the journey to Asgard. After all, Asgard's rune technology, in the final analysis, can also have some connection with the technology on Earth. After all, it belongs to the category of technology. Taking advantage of this opportunity, just let him try to see if he can be inspired. Steal some tech trees and bring them back to Earth. Only. As long as he thinks of Odin's ambiguous attitude, Russell feels a little apprehensive. If you bring this master of time management over. At that time, how many seeds will be left in the entire Asgard? However, I don't know who leaked the wind and let him know about it. This is the current situation. Looking at the situation now, Tony has clearly made up his mind and must go to Asgard. Helpless, Russell looked at Tony who was still pleading, and reluctantly agreed. Okay, I promise, get up for me. Hearing this, Tony immediately smiled, showing his big white teeth. The smile on his face was very bright. Supreme Mage is wise. Smart ass. Russell couldn't help rolling his eyes when he saw him like this. Changing face so fast, have you practiced it? However, since I brought you all with me, then. Dormammu, come with me too. Me? Dormammu was stunned, pointing at himself with disbelief. Are you sure I didn't start a riot in the past? That old fellow Odin, let me into his place? A notorious dimension Mephisto wants to enter Odin's domain? I really want to go in. When the time comes, I'm afraid Odin will poke a few holes in him. Hearing this, Russell waved his hand, don't worry, Lee won't do that. As he spoke, he narrowed his eyes and looked at Tony, who was elated. It just so happened that you went over and took a good look at him. If he dares to do anything out of the ordinary, I allow you to bring back only his upper body. Tony. Upper body, do I still have a chance? What should I do if Asgard suddenly loses fragrance? However, at this time, instead, Russell didn't give him a chance to refute. Hildam. The voice just fell. Instantly. On the starry sky far away, rainbow-like beams of light shot down directly. Suddenly. The figures of several people disappeared in place. God's domain, Asgard. Like a country that exists in fantasy. This is a land with a round sky and a continent floating in the vast universe. Step on the land, and there is a bottomless abyss underneath. Peripheral area. Colorful on the lengthy bifrost. The brilliance of various energies, like gorgeous lines, spread continuously. And at the end. The figures of Russell and others suddenly appeared in the control room. On the side, Hildam stood with his sword and saluted respectfully. Supreme Mage, welcome to come. Russell waved his hand, not caring. However, next to him. Tony couldn't help but gripped his forehead and complained. Hiss, the style of space transmission is a bit tough. What the hell, it's not as convenient as a magic portal to turn people upside down. Cherish it, your next chance to experience Bifrost is not much, 
Russell said meaningfully. If Thor, the prodigal hammer, takes office, this Bifrost will take jujube pills. Now, it has been liked for the second time, however, Russell had some expectations in his heart. This Bifrost, in a sense, is the product of the combination of technology and magic? Wonder if Tony has a chance to steal the technology back? After all, a man that even the Infinity Gauntlet can duplicate. A mere Bifrost, I'm afraid it can at least make a product out of shit, right? On the side, Tony felt some liver pain for no reason, and couldn't help shivering. What the hell, is it because someone is trying to trick me again? But soon, he had no chance to think about the answer to this question. On Bifrost, a huge team came head on. The gold armor on his body is majestic, and the weapon in his hand is shining coldly in the sun. And the one at the head is an amiable old man. However, the majestic aura on his body could not be restrained. Welcome to Asgard, Supreme Mage. Greeted with a smiling face, Russell had no choice but to show a smiling face and stretched out his arms. It's the first time we meet, hello, Shenwagong. Flicking out of the corner of his eye, he immediately noticed something was wrong. Well, what about the girls? Asgard, inside the Golden Hall. A party is being held. Let's raise a glass to the arrival of Supreme Mage. On the throne, Han Ding cheered enthusiastically. Bottom, immediately aroused a warm response. After exchanging cups and cups, between toasts and cups, another big bowl is eaten. Seeing this scene, Odin was very satisfied. This atmosphere highlights an Asgard. But turning around, Yi Shi was a little surprised. Exalted mage, why don't you drink? Could it be that the drinks in our Asgard don't suit your appetite? No, I never like drinking. Russell spoke insincerely. To be honest, the attitude of these people drinking scared him a little. What the hell, these Asgardians are probably reincarnated from wine barrels. Drinking is like drinking water, everyone is a master. Didn't you see that Tony and Modu, who are earthlings, have already drunk and got down? I'm afraid that no matter how strong his constitution is, he can't stand the madness of these alcoholics. I don't know, can the man of steel that I just signed in get sober? Russell murmured inwardly. This is the reward he got for signing in at the Golden Hall just now. A surprise from the system. The ability to become stronger just by basking in the sun fits perfectly with his salty fish personality. By the way, it also complements the shortcomings of his body as an earthling. However, after thinking about it, Russell decided to forget it. It's better not to take risks. Odin is too good for his supreme mage. That affectionate attitude. If he didn't know that Odin's sexual orientation is normal, he almost thought he had some thoughts about him. But even so, it still made his scalp tingle. If only you were as nice to Loki as you are to me. I'm afraid, Asgard doesn't have so many things to do. Russell couldn't help but curse in his heart. Watch the scene where a bunch of drunks get drunk on the set. For a while, I felt that the girls who downloaded songs and danced were no longer popular. I'm going out to get some air, after finishing speaking, without waiting for Odin to respond, he walked out of the Golden Hall. Walking out of the hall, Russell breathed a sigh of relief. Looking at the golden buildings under the sun. Suddenly, an idea came to his mind. I don't know, will Loki jump out and make trouble at tomorrow's throne succession ceremony? Exactly, let me see where Loki is now. He is also full of curiosity about this drama that brings together Gongdu, CP, and Favors. It's not a big deal to watch the excitement, it's his kind. However, at this moment, behind him, there was a sound of footsteps. Russell looked back, suddenly a little surprised. Why did you come out? It was Odin. Hearing this, Odin's face froze immediately, and the smile froze on his face. MMP, you still have the face to say it. The protagonists of the banquet all ran out. Why the hell did I come out to get some air? But immediately, he sorted out the thoughts in his mind, and a smile appeared on his face again. Exalted mage, how do you feel about Asgard? Not bad. Russell snapped casually, it's very lively and has a great atmosphere. I am sure young people will love this place. There is wine, meat, and beautiful women. What young man doesn't like it? Even if you like brother expensive, I'm afraid it will only be more joyful. Hearing this, the smile on Odin's face suddenly couldn't hold back, and he said with gritted teeth. I asked about Asgard's strength, supreme mage. Uh. Russell was taken aback for a moment. Immediately afterwards, he cast a glance at him, his old face full of sorrow. Immediately understood what he meant. Your time is almost up, Odin. Are you worried that Asgard will not be able to continue after you leave? Yes. 
Odin sighed heavily. The tone of the vicissitudes of life was full of helplessness. I specially invited you here this time, just to talk to you about this matter. By the way, let's see if I can borrow the name of Supreme Mage. Shock the voyeurs in the universe looking at Asgard. Do you want to form a covenant? Russell saw through his thoughts at a glance. And Odin obviously didn't mean to hide it, he just nodded and admitted. That's right. It's like a contract with Ancient One Mage. It's just that the contractual relationship between us has to go one step further. It's not just limited to fighting against invaders from other dimensions, but also needs to help each other and protect their respective territories. As the sleeping time approached, his power became stronger and stronger. In the same way, I can feel more and more the storm that is looking forward to Asgard in my heart. The sense of crisis is getting stronger, although there are no signs yet. However, fear is there. After his death, the whole of Asgard will fall under Ragnarok. That's the worst case scenario. Impossible. Russell refused without any hesitation. He knew very well what was coming to Asgard. A troubled earth is enough for him. If Asgard is included in the scope of protection again. I'm afraid. Even he will be exhausted. No matter what conditions you use, it is impossible for me to agree to this contract. It's almost like Ancient One. Want to throw this mess on him again? Who dares to accept this? Hearing this, Odin became more and more worried. However, there are still some unwillingness to give up, and tentatively asked. The eternal fire? I have. Russell said firmly. Infinity gauntlet? Fake. Casket of ancient winters? No use. Destroyer armor? Enough, stop talking. Russell listened, his heart seemed to be bleeding. If you go on talking, I'm afraid I can't help but go to your bow curry noodle. Seeing this, a smile appeared on Odin's face. Hee hee, if the supreme mage likes it, just take it away. Mad, old fox. Russell cursed inwardly. These treasures are indeed full of temptation. Thousands of years of Odin's collection, no joke. However, it is not easy to take these things away from Odin. First of all, you have to think about the consequences. How about this, supreme mage? Odin suggested again. As long as you can guarantee that the Asgardians can accept your protection on Earth, then you can choose among these treasures. However, only one item, the proposal. Russell was lost in thought. In contrast, this proposal is not so harsh. Moreover, it is not that troublesome to implement. Really think about it. However, there is one more problem. Isn't just one treasure too little? Is the face of my supreme mage only worth this price? Early the next morning. Asgard, huge amounts of above the square. A feast of all Asgardians is underway. Asgard's succession ceremony. Everyone cheered enthusiastically and their eyes were shining. Congratulations to the successor of the new god king. It's really a big scene. Seeing the endless sea of people cheering, Russell couldn't help feeling a little bit emotional. Do you think there are only two or three big cats and kittens in Asgard? But in fact, he is simply a warplane, okay. If you really look at the expressiveness in the movie. This Asgard must have been breached long ago. By contrast. Looking back now, when he, the supreme mage, succeeded to the throne, he was indeed a little shivering. At this time. Beside, Tony turned his head sideways. There was a light of interest in his eyes, he smiled and said. Supreme mage, yesterday you and God King Odin were outside the Golden Hall. Um? Hearing this, Russell's face froze immediately, turning around with some difficulty. In the eyes, burning eyes revealed a dangerous atmosphere. What do you see? Tony didn't realize it, and continued. Hey, I saw you and Odin almost got into a fight. Really? Russell's heart skipped a beat. Yesterday's image of him and Odin was not so good. Those who fought over the matter of the Nine Realms contract were blushing. Almost disregarded the image of the big fight. But. Young man, your road is narrow. You see something you shouldn't see. How dare you say it? Find shit. Facing Russell's vaguely threatening gaze, Tony didn't know it, and continued. I think, if there is a real fight, Supreme Mage, you will definitely beat that little old man Odin to the ground. What he said made sense. Russell was also relieved to hear it. Still, isn't it inappropriate to speak ill of Odin in his turf? Wait. How did you know? Russell hastily interrupted him, changing the subject. I remember, aren't you drunk? Who said I was drunk? Tony raised his head and said confidently. How could I, Tony Stark, get drunk by them? In terms of drinking capacity, they are not my opponent. I just let them have a hand, by the way, to prevent accidents from happening. 
accidents. Makes sense. Boys must learn to protect themselves when they go out. However, if it was said by Tony, Russell would not believe a word of it. I think you wish you could get drunk and do some foolish things openly. Speak English. Noticing Russell's unfriendly gaze, Tony felt a little guilty. He touched the back of his head, smiled sarcastically, and said. Well, I actually saw it when I was looking for the toilet. Looking for a toilet? I'm afraid it's not kidney deficiency. Looking over with disdainful eyes, even the sow would bow her head in shame. However, Tony acted the same, as if he didn't see anything. What a thick skin. Russell scorned for a moment. Immediately, he retracted his gaze. The succession ceremony is underway. However, the soul is always scattered. Russell immediately spotted the sneaky figure rushing to the apse of the Golden Hall. There was a sudden realization in his heart, and his eyes unconsciously turned to the thin figure beside the throne. Looks like Loki still did it. Secretly contacted the Frost Titans, and told them where the casket of ancient winters was. Tisk tisk. In order to have a chance to prove himself, this Loki is really unscrupulous. However, at this moment, Tony's voice came from beside his ear. Asgard's next god king, Thor, is that all? A boor with a hammer? With a face full of surprise, he looked at Thor, who was half kneeling on the ground, a little confused. He really has the ability to manage Asgard well? Tony doubted that. It was also the first time he had seen this Thor up close. At yesterday's banquet, the hammer wandered around out of nowhere. Hearing this, Russell almost didn't laugh out loud. What nonsense are you talking about? If you keep talking like this, you will be beaten, you know. While speaking, he pouted his head as a gesture. Tony turned his head, and suddenly found the Asgardian soldiers behind him looking at him unkindly. Suddenly my heart trembled, and I immediately shut up. At the same time, on the throne, Odin also noticed the change in the treasury. Suddenly his expression changed, and he stopped talking. Then, under Thor's bewildered expression, he left in a hurry. Hey, wait for me, father. Thor shouted behind him, and hurriedly followed with a hammer in hand. Below, a group of Asgardians exploded, discussing a lot. On the other side, Tony also had a bewildered expression on his face. What's going on here? What happened to the good succession ceremony? Could it be that Odin is dissatisfied with his son? Russell smiled mysteriously and didn't say much. Follow up and you'll know. This good show has just begun. Odin treasury. A mess. Deep Blue's blood was all over the ground, and there were burn marks. Among them, the most striking thing is the artifact that fell to the ground, Casket of Ancient Winters. And the corpses of the Frost Titans killed by the Destroyer armor. What's going on here? Looking at the scene in front of him, Thor asked in a daze. Raise the hammer and look around in a daze. Hearing this, Odin gave him a hard look, and secretly scolded him for not living up to expectations. Obviously, the ice jar has invaded my vault. They want to steal the ice box. No, to be precise, it should be said to be retrieved. This is an artifact belonging to the Frost Titan. However, when he fought in the Nine Realms, he was taken back to Curry as a spoil of war. Frost Titan invasion? Hearing this, Tolton was furious. How dare they? This is a provocation to Asgard, a declaration of war. It seems that we have been silent for too long, they have forgotten the strong sky of Asgard. Father, I implore you to send troops to attack Jotunheim. Hearing this, Odin was immediately out of breath. Enough, you idiot. Do you think that all problems can be solved by relying on force? The whole thing was a scolding meal, which directly stunned Thor. Even Tony, who just came in, was stupefied. Supreme Mage, what's the situation now? The old landlord and his stupid son, Russell said simply. As Odin said, not everything can be solved by force. The current Thor is simply a copy of Odin. On him, you can clearly see the shadow of Odin when he was young. Young and energetic, aggressive and aggressive, advocating force. If it is as a general who charges into battle, then Thor is absolutely perfect now. However, as a god king, this is absolutely substandard. Definitely, this may also be due to not being strong enough. After all, as long as you are strong enough, you can really do whatever you want. Isn't it a piece of cake to be the god king of Asgard? You don't deserve to be the god king of Asgard at all. Soon, there was a roar from Odin. Tony's face was livid, and he turned his head and left. Seeing his appearance, Odin blew his beard and stared angrily. The gun of eternity almost couldn't be stopped. Exalted mage, look at him. Hearing this, 
Russell immediately smiled and smoothed things over. Okay. Okay. Young and vigorous. Who hasn't had this kind of time? Even he can't help but want to beat Dormammu sometimes. Who is not a young man? Dormammu. Co-authoring all the reasons you told me are all nonsense. Just want to lay hands on me. Torda. Odin shook his head with a wry smile and sighed. What a disappointment. Hee <laughs> hee. Russell couldn't deny it. Which of your three children will not disappoint you? One thing to say, Odin is good at educating the next generation. The eldest daughter, Hela, is a loving father and a filial daughter. The first thing to do when you come out is to renovate the palace. Brought down the statue of Odin by the way. The second son, Thor, is one-sided. The brain is full of protein. As for the third son Loki, the face came. I don't want to cheat my father all the time. This. What a loving family. However, thinking of this, an idea popped up in Russell's mind. Have you ever considered releasing Hela, the goddess of death? Believe that with her leadership, Asgard will not decline. Even if it's Ragnarok, I'm afraid there is an ability to stop it. Hearing this, Odin's face suddenly changed, and he said decisively. This is impossible. No one knows Hela's menace better than he does. She is a war madman. Now, it is an enhanced version of Thor Thor. And, more importantly, Thousands of years later, I'm afraid she has disappointed me as a father. No. It should be said that I hate it to the bone. If you release her, it will make Asgard fall into the quagmire even more. But she'll come out sooner or later, won't she? Russell smiled. As Odin's slumber draws closer, the power of the seal is diminishing. Perhaps, it won't be long. The eldest daughter of Odin will break the seal and put on a show of fatherly kindness and filial piety. At least not now. Odin's attitude was firm. He knew this very well. However, what he did was delaying time. Internal and external troubles. This is the current situation in Asgard. Again, this is why Russell is reluctant to intervene in Asgard. Because at least. Now there are no ghosts on the earth anymore. In contrast, external threats are easier to solve. Supreme Mage, how do you think this matter should be handled? It's easy, just grab Loki. No ghosts, all safe. Supreme Mage is joking, how could I attack my own son? Accompanied by the voice, the footsteps of the two gradually drifted away. In the same place, Tony still looked dazed. A face full of hell. What the hell have I been listening to? Death Goddess Hela. Odin has a daughter. Asgard. Outside the magnificent palace. Thor held Mjolnir in his hand, squatting on the ground sullenly. What the hell, the good throne succession ceremony was interrupted just like that. The position of the king of gods is also far away from him. Not to mention, he was scolded so badly, whoever it is will feel unbearable. What's more, it's the grumpy Thor. It was all for Odin's sake that he didn't get mad on the spot. Take a step back and think, the more you think about it, the more angry you get. The anger in Thor's heart became more and more powerful. When did these little Jotunheim mice dare to provoke Asgard? Is the gun of eternity bad, or his Mjolnir won't discharge? What annoyed him even more was Odin's attitude. Father is too weak. Others were bullying to the top, and they didn't show any signs of it. I'm afraid, even if you are a normal person, you should fight back vigorously. What's more, this is the god king of Asgard. A god king who has no temper at all is still a fart. Thinking that Odin not only didn't deal with Jotunheim's affairs, but also scolded him. Tolton's mentality exploded, at this time. Not far away, several figures came over. It's Loki, and Sensen Maruda and others. Thor. Why are you sitting here? What the hell happened? Did His Majesty Odin tell you something? Thor felt a touch of warmth from the successive inquiries of concern. It's still my group of little friends who are reliable. No. And a hammer. Ever since, Thor took advantage of the situation to tell the whole story. Definitely, a little bit of oil and vinegar is indispensable. During this period, he denounced Odin's cowardice and weakness almost said that Odin is not worthy of being a god king. Your majesty Odin must have a reason for doing this, Seif comforted. Beside, Hogan also echoed. That's right, you shouldn't misunderstand his majesty Guogong. Several people grew up listening to Odin's stories and deeply adored him. Naturally, there would be no objection to Odin's actions. However, when these words fell on Thor's ears, they seemed particularly harsh. Vri. His fingers were trembling, and he was so angry that he was speechless. Is it all my fault? I misunderstood him? Thor's eyes widened, and he said angrily, 
aside. Loki, who watched all this quietly, suddenly showed a smile on his face. In my heart, I snickered endlessly. Sure enough, this brainless brat will never bow his head like Odin. It can be said that almost all Asgardians are loyal admirers of Odin. If you want to complain to them, Thor may have found the wrong person. Then, in due course, with a sad look on his face, he sighed. It's not your fault, Thor. These are the schemes of the Frost Titans. As he spoke, he had a distressed expression on his face. Don't you understand? The purpose of their doing this is to prevent you from ascending the throne of Asgard. Then, they can be unscrupulous, no more threats. Hearing this, Thornton was taken aback for a moment. Immediately afterwards, he flew into a rage, so it is. No wonder these frost titans appear at this time. Don't come early, don't come late, but he came to make trouble when he sat on the throne of Celestial Master. This is simply a naked conspiracy. Suddenly, Thor figured everything out. These frost titans must have seen through Odin's temper. That's why it's so unscrupulous. Moreover, it also prevented him from ascending to the throne of God King. All of this is the frost titans' conspiracy. Sooner or later, they will hit Asgard, Thor gritted his teeth. Next to him, Loki's face suddenly showed a sinister smile of success. But immediately, he restrained himself. Even he didn't expect that everything would go so smoothly. It went so smoothly that it felt like a dream. Thor, an idiot, actually came up with a conspiracy theory in his own brain. Loki almost laughed out loud at the thought. However, he was right about one thing, this is indeed a conspiracy. However, the target is only himself. What are you going to do? Loki asked with feigned concern. Will your father believe what you say? Hearing this, Thornton was taken aback for a moment. Then, after thinking for a while, with a bitter smile, he shook his head. I think, he shouldn't believe my idiot's speculation. The words that Odin cursed at him, to this day, still linger in his ears. On the side, the three warriors of Asgard were stunned. Until now, Tuan came back to his senses a little bit. Then what should we do? If this is really a Frost Titan conspiracy, we can't turn a blind eye. Think for a moment. Under Loki's expectant eyes, Thor quickly made up his mind. Raising the hammer sharply, flipping off the cloak, Silver White's breastplate glistened. Let's stop this conspiracy together. I believe that after all the truth is revealed, the father will forgive us. You mean. Seif was a little puzzled. Go to Jotunheim and teach them a hard lesson. Wonderful. Loki calls himself an expert. This simply coincides with his ideas, however, the three warriors of Asgard seem to be somewhat hesitant about this. But. This is against His Majesty Odin's order. It's okay. Father will understand us. Then how do we get there? With Loki's magic. Hearing this, everyone's eyes immediately looked over. Don't, I'm not a leading party. However, Thor shook his head and denied. No. Find Heimdall, I have a way to get him to agree. Golden Hall apps in a colorful back garden. Russell and Odin are strolling. What are you going to do? Just watch Loki flick Thor around. Loki fooled Thor's words, both of them listened in their ears. That's his own stupidity. Having said that, Odin is out of breath. As his own son, the next god king. How could he be such a mindless idiot? Just thinking about it makes him feel wishful. However, he glanced at Russell beside him, and soon he had another idea in his mind. How about you help me educate Thor for a while, Supreme Mage? This. Russell was taken aback for a moment. Immediately, a trace of hesitation flashed across his face. He is absolutely professional when it comes to teaching people. It is not impossible to help Odin educate Hammer. Only, thinking of Thor's stubborn character and bad temper. Shaking his head immediately, he refused, saying. Let's forget it, if I teach him. I'm afraid, I'm afraid I can't help but beat him to death. Hearing this. Odin's head was suddenly covered with black lines. This temper tantrum is really. However, as soon as the topic changed, he immediately made another proposal. What about Loki? What do you think of him? After this matter is dealt with, let him follow you. It's also a mage, I think, he should be very suitable. Russell glanced sideways at him. Before this matter even started, you have already helped him settle down? Loki, this troublemaker, throwing it into the magic holy place, I'm afraid he's going to make a big mess. No. Just refuse without saying a word. This guy is just an insider. Not only can reveal information, but also occasionally lead the way. No matter what you do, you will be the number one in dirty tricks. He didn't want such a scourge in Kamar Taj. Well, 
It seems that they are not suitable. Odin can only regret. He originally thought that he could take this opportunity to accept some people for this supreme mage. In order to draw in the relationship with Asgard. As a result, where did he expect it? The impression of my two sons has been rotten to the bone in other people's eyes. Glancing at Odin beside him, Russell thought about it. I always feel that he is thinking of some bad ideas again. What kind of thing is it that you always put your son under other people's hands? He is not a white beard, he has such a strange hobby. However, shaking his head, Russell was too lazy to take care of it. It's almost time, I should go back to Earth. So fast. Odin was suddenly surprised. Turning around, looking at him with burning eyes. Could it be that I didn't entertain you well? Is there anything I'm not satisfied with? No, it's not. Russell shook his head, denying. The girls in Asgard are really warm, but this enthusiasm frightened him somewhat. However, that cannot be said. So, he said tactfully. I still have some things to attend to. Besides, the things you gave me will take time to complete. All right. Hearing this, Odin could only shake his head regretfully. It is indeed a big project. If you need help, welcome to Asgard. Will do. Russell spoke briefly and didn't say much. After finishing speaking, he turned and left directly. Asgard. Huge amounts of arena. Like an arena in the shape of ancient Rome, countless cheers spread throughout the venue. Logan. Logan. Roar. Roars echoed throughout the arena. And as the voice fell, the figure of another Asgardian warrior fell. The spectators were immediately disappointed and booed. Soon, a figure crawled onto the arena. Which other warrior from Asgard wants to challenge Mephista Dormammu from Midgard? Tony raised the microphone and let out a soul roar. The scene was suddenly silent. Everyone was terrified by Dormammu's power. This Mephista from Midgard not only looks like a monster. Even in terms of strength, it is at the monster level. Under the stage, the 17 warriors who have fallen are the best proof. Seeing this, Yuni was not disappointed either. This is not the first time he has encountered this situation. For this, he has a way. Could it be that the warriors of Asgard are all cowards? The voice just fell. There was an uproar in the audience. Although I have heard it many times. However, every time I hear it, the anger in my heart can't help but surge up. Straight into my mind, the thought that I was afraid of was suddenly smashed into a paste. Oh. Let me. The crowd was excited. The same aggressive method, and then the second time also has the same effect. These competitive Asgardians, how can they bear this kind of stimulation? One by one scrambling to the front of the stage. Seeing this, Tony immediately burst into a smile, and his heart blossomed with joy. Slow down, slow down, come one by one, pay first. That one over there, don't even think about jumping in line. After everything was arranged, Tony couldn't help but grin from ear to ear. Counting the gold coins, he stepped down slowly. And at this time, behind him, a voice suddenly sounded. Tony, what are you doing? Didn't you see? Count the money. Tony replied casually without looking back. As soon as he finished speaking, he froze for a moment. This voice seems a little familiar, could it be that? Hastily turned around and looked over. Really? He suddenly thought something was wrong. But on the surface, they greeted each other with a smile. Under his hand, he quietly put the gold coin back into his pocket. Supreme Mage, why are you here when you are free? At the moment, Russell stared at him intently, with a somewhat unkind expression on his face. I asked you to shop around in Asgard, but you ended up here? Tony was in a hurry. Supreme Mage, listen to my explanation. Russell waved his hand, interrupting his words. Stop talking. Go back and talk. Wait. Wait until I spend all these gold coins. I also want to bring some souvenirs back home. Returning local products, what a clever little ghost. I let the hammer add a buff to your head, do you want it? New York, Trident Building, Inside Shield. Nick Fury is worrying about something. Phil Coulson Agent, do you think we still have access to the power of magic? Beside, Phil Coulson touched the growing hairline, a little distressed. Uh, I think, maybe, there is a chance, right? The prince from Wakanda, didn't he go in like Tony? This shows that their magic is not closed to outsiders, but there is a standard. Standard? Hearing this, Nick Fury's heart moved immediately. This point reminded him somewhat. For a long time, he thought that he could come into contact with the existence of magic. All lucky ones, completely random. But, according to Phil Coulson, it seems. As far as we know, so far, 
there are two people who can confirm that they have come into contact with magic. Tony Stark, and Prince of Wakanda, T'Challa. If you put aside the influence of the so-called magical ability, what do you think they have in common, Phil Coulson? Nick Fury turned his head and looked over. Hearing this, Phil Coulson's face suddenly turned bitter. He stroked the hair on top of his head, he was a little worried that if he continued to think like this, he would really become bald. However, after thinking about it, he quickly thought of the answer to the question. Identity. The identities of the two people are not ordinary. Perhaps having money can be counted as one of the common points. After all, the princes of the poorest countries are richer than the people of common, right? Hearing this, Nick Fury's eyes lit up. Turning his head and patted his shoulder fiercely, he said with satisfaction. Excellent, Phil Coulson. I think we're pretty close to the truth. Arrange some high-ranking officials and government officials immediately, go there and try. At this time, outside the door, a figure knocked on the door and hurried in. It's Hill Agent. Director, something has happened, Agent Hill said with a serious face. Hearing this, Nick Fury immediately became serious. What happened? An abnormal energy response has been detected. Although it is only a moment, the detected energy response is enough to destroy the entire Earth. Hearing this, Nick Fury's heart trembled. On the side, Phil Coulson's eyes twitched when he heard it. Destroy the Earth? What is this concept? Even if all the nuclear bombs of human beings add up, they are nothing more than scrubbing and developing. Destroy man himself. This thing with such a huge energy response is a weapon after all. Or human. Where is the target location? Nick Fury asked with a tense body and a gloomy expression. In a small town in the state of Mexico, Hill replied. Hearing this, Nick Fury nodded with deep eyes. It seems that it is necessary to go there in person. And the other side. Kamar Taj, inside the holy place. Tony was shivering, looking at the figure sitting above. No matter how I think about it, I feel that something is not good. This supreme mage suddenly called him over, could it be because he wants to settle accounts after the fall? Waited for a long time, but the scene was still silent. As imagined, the scene of attack did not appear. The silence continued. Finally, Tony couldn't hold back anymore. Supreme Mage, what can you do? Yin Ji asked cautiously. If there is nothing wrong, then I. Hearing this, Russell raised his head, narrowed his eyes and looked over. What do you think? Not explaining what you did in Asgard. Let Dormammu work and earn money, what a clever little ghost you are. Even I don't dare to do that. It's been a long time. Uh. Tony was at a loss for words, but soon, he found a suitable excuse. I'm here to promote the relationship between Earth and Asgard. Look, Asgard worships the strong, so. That's why you charged money. Russell looked over with disdainful eyes. But soon, he withdrew his gaze. This issue will not be discussed for the time being. Now is the time for you to contribute to Kamar Taj. Contribution. Contribute what? Tony was a little confused. If it's money, how much of this kind of thing you want? It's as simple as eating and drinking, but for him, he is indeed qualified to say such words. Hearing this, Russell couldn't help laughing immediately. Money? What's the use of this kind of thing? Besides, even if I ask for money, I won't look for you, don't forget there is T'Challa. That's the man with the vibranium mine in his house. The combined wealth of the entire earth is probably not as deep as his family's mine. Tony. Feel offended. This is a big project, I believe it is much bigger than everything you have ever done. As he spoke, Russell's eyes sparkled. In the clear eyes, huge spiritual energy gathered. Tony, get ready. Immediately. Tony felt his eyes go dark. In my mind, a tingling sensation came. It was as if thousands of ants were scurrying about in his mind. What are these? Tony looked up with some difficulty. Damn it, how can my brain have so much extra information? They're even bigger than the memories I've had in half my life. Seeing this, Russell smiled slightly and comforted. Don't worry, they won't interfere with your memory. It's a war machine of magic and technology. I believe its name should be familiar to you. It is, Bifrost. Hearing this, Tony immediately recalled it and couldn't help exclaiming. Is that the one from Asgard? Right. I want you to be able to build it. Tony. Myself? You gong moves mountains? Toothpicks stir big vats? Are you trying to exhaust me to death? Even in Asgard, the construction of Bifrost was completed by the whole of Asgard. A crystallization of magic and technology unique to Asgard. The role of Bifrost. 
In addition to being a war machine that allows people to reach the battlefield at any time, it is also a starfighting weapon. Russell said with a smile, Don't you want to try to create such an artifact that spans the ages? Hearing this, Tony gave him a blank look full of resentment. No. I don't want to. You are squeezing labor. It's proving your worth, Tony, Russell retorted. Everyone will remember your contribution to the earth. Hearing this, Tony suddenly felt a little moved. Such a big project across the ages, if it can be completed, it will definitely be famous in history. But, how could it be possible for me to create Bifrost alone? Just a design blueprint almost exploded his mind. The amount of engineering contained in it is simply a lifetime series. Besides, what about the materials used to build Bifrost? Many materials are not available on Earth. And those Asgardian magic techniques. Having said that, Tony's small eyes looked over. His eyes were full of resentment. Hearing this, Russell immediately smiled and comforted. Don't worry, you haven't forgotten that there is a country with advanced technology on the Earth, right? Wakanda. On this matter, I believe they will be happy to help. Because, according to Russell's observations, although Wakanda's vibranium technology is developing rapidly, it entered the interstellar era one step earlier than the outside world. However, it is a pity that their technological level has fallen into a bottleneck period. In the absence of reference objects at all, it is unrealistic to want a large-scale explosion of technology trees. I believe that such a unique Bifrost technology will definitely surprise them. As for construction materials and magic, Asgard will provide technical support. Hearing this, Tony was speechless for a moment. Co-author, have you prepared all this for me? Just wait for me to agree. Shaking his head, Empress Tien also didn't know what to say. Helpless, I had no choice but to reluctantly agree. All right. Hopefully I can build this damn Bifrost before I die of old age. After finishing speaking, he turned and left sullenly. Seeing his appearance, Chuan Su had a deeper understanding of the difficulty of building Bifrost. Even Tony, who has always been arrogant and never wants to be inferior in technology. Willing to lower their proud heads. Touching his chin, he was thinking about a question. Since even Tony said so, why don't you ask Odin to borrow some people? At this time, in my mind, a voice suddenly sounded. There are not enough members in the chat group, searching for new members to join. God Igo joined the chat group. Crimson Master Saitoric joins the chat group. Insufficient chat group members. Why did you go early? Russell couldn't help complaining in his heart. But soon, he didn't have time to think so much. His mind was completely attracted by the new members. God Egg? Is that Star Lord's father? A living planet that is going to expand to the entire universe? Yet another villain. Russell felt that this chat group should be called the villain chat group directly. Although they are all bosses, there are fewer and fewer normal people. As for the Crimson Master Saitoric as soon as this person appeared, the entire chat group fell silent. Dormammu trembled, Thanos dared not speak, and Odin simply played dead. As for the others, maybe I haven't even heard his name. After a long time, someone finally spoke. Faith, the Lord of Hell, at Lord Saitoric. Aren't you coming out to say hello? However, after a long time, no one answered. The scene was a little embarrassing for a while. However, Mo Faith felt a little relieved in his heart. It's time for entertainment on Earth, and he doesn't want to be targeted by this demon from the Crimson Hell. Mainly, the relationship between the two is not so good. Faith, the Lord of Hell. Let's go, this guy is probably not awake yet. Hearing this, everyone breathed a sigh of relief. However, immediately afterward, they spoke one after another. Thanos the Destroyer of Thousand Stars. At Supreme Mage Russell, how did you invite him in? Dormammu, Lord of the Dark Dimension. This chat group can't stay anymore. Ms. Marvel Carol. What happened? Supreme Mage Russell. I said, this is an accident, do you believe it? Pretty innocent. Russell felt good about himself. But the appearance of the Crimson Ruler Saitoric. This is what the system is doing. In the entire chat group, no one knows this demon from the Crimson Universe better than him. Well, except Mo Faith. These two have had an old friendship for millions of years. In terms of the degree of understanding, Russell only knows the surface. Still, little is known about those. Perhaps for the members of the group who don't even know the surface, he already knows a lot. In the history of Marvel, this Crimson Demon has not appeared many times. However, every appearance is the beginning of a big event. As for his strength, 
Just the fact that he can ignore infinite gems proves how powerful he is. If it is said that Dormammu can transcend time and ignore most concepts, it can already be regarded as powerful. Then, the existence of Sederak, clearly on another level. Dormammu, the Lord of Darkness with a fierce reputation in the outside world, is placed in front of him, and he can only be beaten. Even in numerous dimensions that can be called hell. The existence of the Crimson Universe is also the most powerful one. Definitely, the most famous will always be Moto Faith. The posture of this Hell Lord is different every time he appears on the stage. Fortunately, he is now in a deep sleep. Thinking of this, Russell couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. If this guy came out to make trouble, then he could only watch and stare blankly. If he wanted to stop it, his small arms and legs were useless at all. But. To be honest, there is still some connection between Kamar Taj and these Crimson Masters. However, the correlation is negative. The Scarlet Chains of Cytoric, the Red Song of Toric. Thinking of this, Russell couldn't help but feel the urge to cover his face. These magics that rely on the energy of the Crimson Universe can only be cast. To put it nicely, it's called borrowing. To put it bluntly, it's called stealing. Perhaps the Crimson Master was still dozing off and didn't notice it. But if he finds out, this. I'm afraid I'm going to tear down the whole earth. Suddenly feel a little tired. This day is really difficult. Unknowingly, Russell found out. Another burden on my shoulders. There is an urge to sigh in my heart. This supreme mage, it's not easy to be. No wonder Ancient One is bald. The reason has been found. In the universe. Among the bright stars. On a certain huge amounts of planet. The starlight shines, and the hazy brilliance is engraved on its body. Seen from above. The shape of the entire planet is like a human face with huge amounts of it. Mountains, rivers and ravines constitute the lines on his face. Deep valleys like huge amounts of eyes. This is the god Ego, the living planet. Inside the planet. Huge amounts of netted structures. The shining light spots and energy lines are like the neuron structure in the human brain. In the deepest part of the planet, Yiji's huge consciousness is hidden. Looking at the chat group that suddenly appeared in his mind, Yi Ge was a little puzzled. Although in my mind, there is already a little explanation for the emergence of this chat group. However, he still couldn't believe it. When will an outsider be able to invade my brain? Even when he was asleep, it is also extremely difficult for other people to invade his mind and forcibly invade. What's more, he is still in a state of sobriety now. You know, he is a living planet with self-awareness. The most powerful among them is also the one he is most proud of. It is the trembling spiritual power in his mind. This made him feel a little unbelievable, however. The contents of this magical chat group made him feel at a loss. What the hell is the Supreme Mage Russell? What is Dormammu, Lord of the Dark Dimension? Hell Lord Mo Faithto. Could it be that during the time I've been busy transforming other planets, have I lost touch with the entire universe? Egg was at a loss. However, the next few names made him feel relieved. Thanos the Destroyer of a Thousand Planets, Carol Ms. Marvel. He had heard of these two names before. And, this time. The deeds of these two are widely spread in the universe. Even from the passing spacecraft, you can hear people talking about this snow situation. However, to be sure, he felt it was necessary to confirm first. Celestial Ego. At Carol, are you the one who recently went to war with the Kree Empire? In the universe. Carol, who was flying at the speed of light, raised his eyebrows. Can't tell. This guy is also in StarCraft together? Ms. Marvel Carol. At Godego who are you? However, your message is out of date. The war between me and the Kree Empire has long since ended. At this time, someone came out again immediately. Thanos, destroyer of thousand stars. At Marvel Ms. Carol where are you now? The battle between us is not over yet. Ms. Marvel Carol, go home. If you want, you can come to Earth and find me. Thanos. Farewell. Go home? Is Aunt Marvel going back to Earth? Seeing the news in the chat group, Russell was also a little surprised. He thought this was another great man with great love in his heart, who never entered the house three times. Unexpectedly, there is still a day to return to Earth? However, he didn't care too much. Maybe I'm tired from spending time outside, so I want to come back and have a look. Who knows what's on her mind? Anyway, he was a little unpredictable. Shaking his head, he temporarily put aside the matter of Ant's surprise. Russell's mind was on another matter. Speaking of which, Hammer has become immortal now. This is all about yesterdays. 
Bifrost's huge energy, it's hard not to attract his attention. Now, the mighty Thor Thor, you should be experiencing the joy of being immortal. Well, being hit by a car, beaten, treated as mentally ill. Anyway, these are things that can make people feel frustrated. But, according to the contract with Odin, Wanger should be protected by me. At the very least, just make sure he doesn't die. If it were someone else, Russell would definitely leave this matter to other mages. However, Thor ha ha, there are some good things in it. Thinking of this, a smile appeared on Russell's face. It's just that, before that, there is one thing that needs to be confirmed first. That is, as Odin playing dead, are really asleep. Supreme Mage Russell. At Odin, where? No response. Russell was thoughtful. Maybe the stimulus wasn't big enough. Intensify. Thor is going to be killed. Don't you care? Still no response. Seeing this, Luo suddenly understood one thing. It doesn't matter if he is playing dead or really sleeping. Anyway, until Thor regains his divine power, he won't interfere in this matter. Unless, when it really comes to a critical juncture, you have to take action. Thinking of this, the smile on Russell's face became brighter. In this case, let the children watch. Best, stay still like a bastard. The other side. Asgard. Golden Hall apps. Lying on the gorgeous big bed, Odin fell into a deep sleep. However, when the message in the chat group rang, his body couldn't help but twitched. MMP, this supreme teacher. It also prevents people from sleeping well, he admits. This kind of behavior is indeed not very good. But, can you not expose me? I'm Odin, don't you want to lose face? Beside. Loki, who was feeling sad to himself, was keenly aware of his strangeness. Immediately startled, he tentatively called out. Father? There was no response, as if all this was his illusion. On the side, Frigga explained softly, he might be having a nightmare. You know, Thor's actions made it difficult for him to accept for a while. Hearing this, Loki breathed a sigh of relief. On the surface, the enemy nodded in discomfort. On the already slightly melancholy face, it was even more sad. Thor did something wrong. However, he also received the punishment he deserved. Perhaps, he should need my comfort now. After finishing speaking, he nodded his head, then turned and left. At the same time, the other side of the universe. Some desolate planet. On the huge amounts of the throne, Thanos looked up, looking at the vast scene in the sky. But in his heart, he was thinking about the things in the chat group. A new member of the group, Crimson Universe Cytoric? He didn't want to think too much about it for the time being, and he didn't dare to think about it. However, another new member successfully caught his attention. God Egg? This god, is it the meaning of the god group, or the god clan? This is the focus of his heart. Although there is only a difference of one word, the meaning contained in it is completely different. However, letting him think in his heart, I couldn't find the answer to the question. If you have a chance, you can check with him personally. They are in the same universe, but they have never heard of such a strong name. This was originally something that made him feel strange. This unusual signal often indicates something. Thanos felt in his heart that he should not let himself down. And Odin. Huh. Thinking of this, he suddenly sneered. As for the temptation of that supreme mage, he saw everything in his eyes. Regardless of what Odin had in mind, whether it is deliberately playing dead or really sleeping, can't change a thing. Odin's life is coming to an end. He is about to die. By the time. Thinking of this, Mie's gaze immediately turned to his hand. On that domineering giant glove. The gems inlaid on it shine brightly. Infinity gauntlet. Too bad it's fake. But soon, it can become real. 